I'm here in Brooklyn, New York to attend round 11 of the 2022 Formula E race series, or as they like to call it here in New York, the New York City E Prix. Round 11 is taking place today, Saturday, and round 12 is taking place tomorrow, Sunday, but unfortunately, Michael and I will already be on our way home when that event takes place. Luckily though, we're just about to head to the track, but before we do, the people who invited us, ABB, have arranged for us to sit down, well, stand up, with some of the people responsible for making ABB the leader in e-mobility that it is. And it's my great pleasure to spend a few minutes talking to Frank Moulon. He is the president of ABB e-mobility. Frank, thank you for joining me and, and thanks to ABB for inviting us to New York for the Formula E Pre here. ABB's been at the forefront of rapid charging for EVs for many years. You've just launched a new product, the Terra 360. You've got a brand new factory in Italy. And I, I'm sorry, I can't get my head around this. You're making one rapid charging sta station every minute. Mm -hmm. Tell us about mm -hmm. the Terra 360 and how it's going to transform mm -hmm. the EV charging landscape. Okay, so the, the Terra 360 is our latest flagship product. It offers 360 kilowatt of charging power, uh -huh. uh, which can be split into one, two or four um, dispensing modes. So Fantastic. you can have up to four guns. Um, we currently we deploy it with, with two guns, so it makes two times 180. Um, it's an all-in-one solution, so you install it in one place, so you do not have uh, the split between power conversion and dispensing. Um, so that makes it unique. What also makes it unique, and, and what we uh, paid a lot of attention on, is the user experience around. So. Um, because charging power and conversion, of course, it's a number, right? Right. But, but when you're there at a cons as a consumer, you, it's, it's very important how you interact with the charger, how easy is the flow, how is the cable management, how is the accessibility, <laughs> right. right? So when, when you look at it and, and, and just pull the cable, we have an included cable management retraction system, uh, which is state of the art. So when you, um, the cable comes out from the below, goes all the way up, and then down again is not touching the ground, but like this with this cable management system, you can pull it very, very far. So even if you park wrongly, uh, you can still uh, enable the charge with a decent pulling force. Huh? And of so, course, yeah. if you have accessibility mm -hmm. issues, yeah. it's taking some of the weight. So Absolutely. these 360 uh, yeah. kilowatt or mm -hmm. 350 kilowatt uh, liquid cooled cables mm. are not exactly light. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's taking some of the weight too. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's taking some of the weight. Uh, we also, uh, just to mention that, we, we do the liquid cooled, of course, but we also do non-liquid cooled um, uh, with a, a derated mode. So it means you can have uh, full power for a certain time and then it, it, it starts to rate. That enables the charger also without a liquid cooling system. And uh, that, of course, is taking out some cost and some uh, some some maintenance uh, topics uh, in your uh -huh. in your press mm -hmm. uh, briefing we just mm -hmm. had you talked about how you've gone from mm -hmm. having a separate cabinet mm -hmm. and pedestal mm -hmm. to going into an all-in-one right. unit right what advances have made that possible mm -hmm. because power electronics mm -hmm. are still pretty yeah. big yeah yeah um first of all we we continue to do both right so we uh, we managed to do that uh, but if you look at our uh, at our history, uh, the first product um, we, we had, like with three modes, uh, CCS, Chademo, and AC, is an all-in-one product. Mm -hmm. the, the Terra 50 kilowatt, which is still deployed in, in thousands uh, all around the globe, is an all-in-one product. Uh, we have just, um, when we looked at high power and the, uh, the early days of high power, 2017, 18, when the first deployments came with liquid cool cables, um, the, the power electronics were just quite big uh, and also the um, let's say from a usability point of view you didn't want to stand in front of uh, two big machines right? Right. so that is not a good customer experience um, so we, we came up with these split systems uh, in the meantime power electronics became smaller go more to higher frequency so you can package more in um, but still we continue also doing the split systems 
And uh, why is that? Because you have, when you have a split system, you still have a bit of different customer experience. You can make a one-to-one -one relation between uh, a parking spot and, 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 and the customer and have the conversion somewhere separate. Mm -hmm. Also, when you, when you think about huge installations, so not like uh, two or four stalls, but probably 12, 24, and so on, uh, it makes also economical sense then to um, to have the power conversion at one place. Yeah? So uh, we still believe there is a place for both, uh, for split systems and for all in one. But if you if you install in front of a uh, of a supermarket uh, two chargers, yeah, you, you probably don't want to have a split system, right? There's been an incredible growth mm -hmm. in the reliability of EV mm -hmm. charging stations mm -hmm. across the globe mm -hmm. over the last five years. Mm -hmm. Uptime is much better than it used to be, mm -hmm. but some partners, mm -hmm. some charging mm -hmm. providers mm -hmm. are still struggling to mm -hmm. have a reliability mm -hmm. uptime mm -hmm. that means they would be uh, able to use government funding mm -hmm. to help mm -hmm. expand the network. Mm -hmm. What steps is ABB mm -hmm. taking to ensure that your customers can have a really mm -hmm. high uptime mm -hmm. to your products mm -hmm. in the in installed locations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I fully agree with you. Uptime is critical, and of course, we're all EV drivers here. Right. Yeah? We're all, <laughs> we're all in this. And, and, and the last thing you need is, is approaching a charging station and it doesn't work yeah? because then you, you you might be stranded or you have waiting times and you, nobody wants that. So it's it's really key to have a good experience. Now, um, we are in an industry which is evolving, so um, there is still um, a few bucks here and there, and uh, that is true for us, but that's also true for everyone else. So, uh, we believe we're doing a good job out there. Um, we continue to improve our products. I mean, that's what we, we are doing in terms of reliability going forward, and uh, actually looking at, uh, at, at numbers and, and, and uptimes, and, and when, when we uh, check the charges on our cloud that looks pretty good and impressive actually so there's, there's not an issue and presumably yeah. also mm -hmm. with uh, fail safe modes so that customers uh, can absolutely. still get power even uh, if uh, the absolute, higher power is absolutely so what you um, a typical failure modes is like there is issues with the cooling system so then it falls back into a uh, safe mode on a uh, so you still get instead of 100 and, and something kilowatt you get like like a 40 kilowatt which is not a lot but at least you're not stranded so yeah. that's why a lot mm -hmm. of electro mm -hmm. american customers mm -hmm. lately mm -hmm. have been saying, oh, the station is capable mm -hmm. of 150, mm -hmm. but we're only mm -hmm. getting 50, so that's, yeah. that's possibly that, why. That, that, why. Could be, that could be <laughs> the fail mode, right? Yeah. And then, uh, of course, now to get that up and running, uh, then is a question, okay, well, what is, uh, what what is, is the on? issue, right? Yeah. And, and, and that is always a collaborative mode because we, we are deploying the stations, we're, uh, let's say, with our customers, but then is a question on the maintenance. So who is doing the maintenance? How is that working in collaboration? How is that job done? Yeah? Mm -hmm. And it's not always us doing that job, yeah. right? And, and and then it's again probably on us to get spare parts, which is currently in the supply chain a bottleneck. So mm -hmm. that, that might then be a reason why, why things uh, lag a bit. So but, final uh, question. Mm -hmm. I know you're really busy. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for thank <laughs> you for spending some time with me. The MCS yeah. Yeah. megawatt charging stand has mm -hmm. just been unveiled by mm -hmm. Charin. Mm -hmm. It's a new type of connector that looks a bit like a space mm -hmm. uh, space flying machine mm -hmm. and like a triangular <laughs> UFO. Mm -hmm. It's um, going to hopefully transform the bus and truck mm -hmm. industry. Yeah. What do you see the path for MCS is going to be in the next 12 months? Yeah, I think that the next 12 months we will see the, uh, the, the standard become a bit more descriptive, a bit more precise. Uh, we will see more and more prototypes hitting the market as we see now. I mean, most of the manufacturers, um, they, they, they come with some prototypes and uh, also, the, the, the car manufacturers or truck manufacturers come with, uh, with prototype vehicles. It's all around debugging, interoperability, uh, showcasing that what is possible and um, uh, convincing uh, potential buyers of these trucks that uh, this is a solution going forward. But I think we were pretty much uh, where we have been with cars like 10 years ago. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Do you think it's going to take 10 years for MCS no, to be no, where it is? No, I was hoping no, you would No, 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 <laughs> definitely so not. Yeah. It, all the lessons you've learned from CCS mm -hmm. and uh, Chidemo mm -hmm. deployment, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're already implementing yeah, that with MCS. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. That will go much faster. That will go much faster than with the cars. Yeah? Because the, the, the original, let's say, slow ramp up uh, we had 
with the cars and, and convincing that you even can do long journey, etc. So that, that is, uh, I think we're beyond that. For trucks, not yet, <laughs> but uh, we will get there pretty fast. And, and there is an experience in the industry now how to, um, how to build chargers, how to build that in scale, how to deploy it in scale, how to service it in scale. And if you, if you know how to do all of that at scale, uh, then uh, you will be faster than if you would be completely at day one. Yeah. Frank, thank yeah. you so much yeah. for talking to me. Yeah. I hope yeah. you enjoy the race and your time in New yeah. York City. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the race too. <laughs> thank you. And thank you at home for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again to ABB for inviting us. And thanks to everybody at Formula E for making us feel really, really welcome. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. And don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links in the video description. And if you really like this video, why not give us a super thanks? It's easy to do and everything you do send goes towards helping us make great content. If you haven't already, please make sure you've subscribed to this channel and to our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two and give that bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire crew, go out to everybody who make TE possible. That includes those of you who support us on Patreon and YouTube, as well as those of you who just watch the video and share it with your friends. We know that if you are someone who cannot support us, just watching it makes a really big difference to our ad revenue and to our view count. So. Thank you, because it really does make a massive difference. If you are a supporter at the Charged Up level, you'll see your name right here on my right hand side. And if you have just joined and your name is not there, we are sorry. We only render out those list of names once or twice a month. And there's been a lot of people who've joined lately, so we're trying to keep on top of it, but it's not always possible. Thanks to our self-driving tier supporters, Chris Maxwell, Pedro Muro Pinheiro, Patrick Boyarski, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guida Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Dan Blair, Jim Burness, Chris Asenta, Chris and Michael Johnson, Peter Dillinger and Denny Hyde. And of course, super out of this world thanks to our Starman level supporters, Anonymous Freak, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Rory Litwin, Joe Bresney, Reed R, JP Fagerback, Russ, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, Blue Says Hello, Kevin Boroughbridge, John Lyons, Andrew Glenn, Paul Conway, Laura Reynolds, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. If you want to be part of that amazing list, you can join Patreon at the link below. You can hit the join button to support us on YouTube or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. There are links below. And if you are unable to support us, just know, as I said earlier, just watching the video and sharing it really does make a difference. We have the data to prove it. So thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving.